at the start we used to go to churches they used to have some classes English classes in the churches mm -hmm. on St. Peter's Road and that uh, then a lot of Asians came from Af from Uganda to settle in Leicester yeah. so they did for special schools they put some caravans between on Gwendolyn Road they set up a school for yeah. all the African East African Indians who came to Leicester because probably there was no spaces in normal schools yeah. and they put about 13 14 caravans there were about five six hundred kids studying mm -hmm. So we started education there, in secondary school, yes. from 10 years old to 16. I specifically asked to be moved to an immigrant school because I was interested in learning about different cultures and so on. And as it happened, that was the year the Ugandans came in, mm -hmm. 1972. And they put me in Duxbury School, which was a, a mobile hutted school at the time with the headmaster, Mr Barnes. And I was uh, I was put there, and what a what a difference! My goodness, I'd heard that Indian children particularly were very keen to learn, mm -hmm. and they certainly were. It was absolutely wonderful transformation. Didn't matter what you told them, they absolutely golloped it up and loved it. And I um, I very quickly learned a lot of things about teaching immigrant children. Wakerley School, the secondary school, we had about 350, I think we're in what called level 3 school, which is a maximum of 400 or something. We had about 300 kids, secondary school age. The reopened Catherine Juniors had about the same number of junior school kids. So there were 700 family, 700 children of school age for the entire refugee intake. You know, even if you average it out at no more than two per family, you know, 350 families. It was the biggest bloody nanny event going in some ways, you see. The only thing where it did make a difference was because when, we, when the school opened and the kids came in, I had taught in Africa, so I knew what they expected. And I simply said, for you lot, this might look a bit strange, says, but we are going back to Victorian times. These kids are used to rigid discipline, structure, and doing as they're told instantly. Because in Zambia it's the same. It was, I mean, apart from complexion, it could have been rugby Tom Brown school days. But when, when you walked in, the kids stood up. You greeted the class, the class greeted you, you sat down, you started teaching. Instant control, you know, smashing. Uh, I mean, Dorothy Davis, who was chair of education at the time, and our vice chair of governors, came round, and she came and she said, oh my goodness, she said, the husband was an academic at the university, lovely lady. Um, she said, rather Victorian, isn't it? I said, yeah, but he's great to teach her. <laughs> We never had any discipline problems. We had one kid who caused a bit of graffiti. And even before the kid had got into class, somebody snitched. And I got him in, and him and his mate um, admitted they'd done the graffiti. Next lunchtime, in front of the whole school, who's carrying a bucket, a bucket of paint and a brush? The kid had done it. <laughs> and he is seen to put it right, to repaint the loo again. <laughs> uh, and that was it, end of story. We had a very tough time because we don't have any money. We have to work hard. When I start to work, I work with night shift. And sometimes we go out, we don't have enough warm clothes. And we used to work all hours God sent just to get by. Now, say, if I wanted to, I could have gone on the benefit system or whatever because I was, I was only taking £20 a week. That at that time. But they, I was against the, that I never wanted to go on the benefit system. Business is in our blood. Our parents always work for themselves. They rarely work for anybody else. So obviously, we were, business was in our blood. So we were always looking around to set up our own businesses, whichever format, mm -hmm. whether selling, you know, wholesale bucket of cassava to schools or to restaurants or whatever. We always looking for ways to make ends meet, but without working for somebody. Yeah. While, when I started that, there was also little difficulty. There was one or two people who were saying that, why have you brought an Asian to, uh, over us, actually. Weather didn't help, plus the facilities in the house with the heating, 
we didn't know how to start the fires up you, know, you couldn't afford central heating in them days or rented houses so whatever there was you managed with it just cuddle up all the brothers cuddle up in one bed to keep it warm challenging. yes very challenging the community bought their own place on Nabu Road okay uh, which is obviously now sold as well to the Yellow community. So you had a mosque on Nabu Road, the That's first right, mosque, yeah. purpose first, building for first, you. First, yeah. Brilliant. Well, yeah. purpose building as such, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And then, then gradually about six, seven years, uh, I think it's about nearly more than that, that we moved back to Hamilton. They bought a purpose built mosque. I tell you, when I came in 70, when you see 72, 73, if you uh, travel on the Belgrave Road, if you walk on the Belgrave Road, they used to, that it was like a derelict place, except the BU was there. Mm -hmm. People used to, British United, people used to come there for work, go home, and there was a Woolworth yes, opposite, there. opposite there, and there was a, hardly Asian shops on that Belgrave Road, I tell you. It was a completely rundown area. And I, I still think the what the Uganda nations have brought to that area, especially the Belgrave area, they have worked so much hard for their living and up bringing the business up in the Belgrave area. In the Belgrave area. Just for example, Sanatan Mandir. That was an old church. Yeah. We came from East Africa and we built a temple there. At that time, I remember there was only one temple in Leicester, yes. which is the Sanatan Mandir. Yes. Since then, there are quite a few temples, Ram Mandir and all that in that area. Who brought that one? Our community brought that mm -hmm. one. Because community was expanding. From then on, I went on and I became um, the youngest ever chairman of the Royal College of General Practitioners. Uh, at the age of 43, elected. Everything you get it in Leicester. The things you can't get it in, even India, the dresses, I have seen it's here in, 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 in it is cheaper than, sometimes I compare, it yeah. is cheaper than India. Because the properties in those days, in 72s, the properties in Belgrave Road and Melton Road were about three, four, five thousand pounds at the most and it was like a demolition area. But I think because the Asian communities came in here, the business got picked up so well, and the properties in Belgrave Road and Melton Road today is not 100,000, not even 200, not even 300. They talk in half a million and above. That from right from the Belgrave Road until the end of Melton Road, you will see 99% all the businesses are held by the Asian communities. When we came to Leicester, we had some celebrations in the temples, but now I have seen Leicester City Council is supporting all the Asian communities, and we have Diwali lights on Belgrave Road. Over the years went through, and the Leicester City Council have extended this and made it, made all the, all the streets decorative not only Belgrave Road, Belgrave Road, Melton Road, we can see all the Diwali lights up, we can see the roads are closed on the Diwali days. I th per my personal opinion, I think they've done very well for the Leicester economy, I can't talk for any other towns. Yes. Uh, they came up, they started up small businesses, some have grown into large businesses, some have gone into big knitwear factories. For the Leicester economy, I think Asians coming from Uganda, some helped on the buses, mm -hmm. some did you know, become educated and got clever, but some are lawyers, some are solicitors. Yeah. I think East African Indians did very well in UK, yes. all over UK, because mm -hmm. my cousins are based around, yes. because our ethics are very, very straightforward. Yes. East, East African Indians always ethics will work better yourself all the time so how do you identify yourself being a <laughs> being a british not that asian but british asian that's what i would say you know 
and we are happy to be here. I would say again. So I would say I'm I'm an East African Uganda nation. <laughs> Have you been to Uganda? Since? I've been four times. I've been there after this uh, thing happened. I come settle down here. I've been four times to Uganda, and nowadays Uganda after. Mr. Musovini, he come in power. He try to make a Uganda better because country was already ruined. Everything was completely gone out of the hand because of uh, army people. They spoil everything, but Musovini is a good president for Uganda. 